Hello, Jim here. A great way to make passive income is selling options. I spend a couple hours each week, usually do a trade a day, and it works out quite well. Last week, I did five trades, and it was one of my best weeks. So today, I want to share with you those trades from last week. I also want to talk about the criteria I like to use to choose the companies, and then also the strategies for actually setting up the trade. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy what I have for you. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I do like to give a quick market update. It's been a rough April, primarily because of the higher inflation and also the unrest in the Middle East. I think that's probably going to continue. I wouldn't be surprised if April is still, we're trending down. I do think it's going to turn around maybe in April or, or not April, but maybe May or June. Um, especially when they, we do get closer to cutting rates. I think because of politics, they will cut rates at some point. Big question is, will it be third quarter, fourth quarter? Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them do a cut. And at that point, I could see the market kind of rebounding nicely. Or if inflation, you know, some of these numbers, reports come out and it shows inflation is decreasing, I think that'll have a pretty nice impact too. But I think in the foreseeable future, we're probably going to continue more sideways down like we've seen in April. Um, at least that's my two cents. And as always, it's probably only worth two cents. So I first want to talk about finding great companies or good companies. I like to use several criteria. I like to look to see do, how much debt do they have. That was probably one of the biggest mistakes I made early on is not really digging deeper into a company's debt. I prefer a low debt to equity ratio, like maybe below 0.3. If they have no debt, that's even better. I also like to look to see how are their earnings. Are they year over year increasing their earnings um, as well as, you know, how's their profitability? Do they have a good return on equity? Do they have a good return on capital? Um, are their margins good? Are their margins decreasing for some reason? So I'd, I'd like to look at all that that information. Also, if it's a dividend paying company, are they increasing their dividends? Do they have plenty of cash for dividends? I less about high yield, more about you know, are they increasing the dividends at a nice pace, but doing it in a healthy way? So those are some of the cre or main criteria I like to use. I like to use the Schwab research page. I also like to use Seeking Alpha and bar charts. I use all three. Um, probably my favorite for evaluating a company is probably Seeking Alpha. And as always, if you want to learn more about those tools, I'll have links below. I am an affiliate. If you want to give it a try, I would get a kickback, but it's no, it doesn't cost any more for you to actually try it through the affiliate link. So Wanted to add that, plus details about my memberships are below. I have three levels, and they're filling up fast, so I encourage you to take a look. I do some hand-holding. I provide all my trades. I do. Um, I answer questions. Um, I also have group meetings that we do for two of the levels. We have one coming up this Sunday. And usually I have anywhere from 10 to 15 people at the group meetings, so you know, I encourage you to take a look down below. You, you may find that it's well worth your while. So the other thing that I like to do is I'm beginning to try to rank my trades. So one criteria I typically like to use is return on investment. And you'll see at the end of the this video where I talk about my trades from last week, it's probably my primary factor. But the other is also where where is the company at this time? Where on its 52-week range? Is it close to its 52-week high? Is it in the middle? You know, not near its 52-week high, but not near its 52-week low. I think those two things combined really gives, gives you a good picture of potentially finding a, gov a company that's not overpriced, but may have the opportunity to grow quite a bit in the future. So that's something I'm also looking at um, and trying to still work out the details. I'd be curious to hear from you guys. What kind of criteria do you use? Um, what, how do you rank your trades? And the main goal for ranking my trades is in some instances, it may make more sense to do more contracts. I typically only do one to two contracts 
on typical companies. Now, if it's a very inexpensive company, I will maybe do up to four contracts, but rarely do I do more than four. Now, I may do more contracts, like maybe I'll do three contracts on a trade that's really, really profitable and it's the stock or the security isn't overpriced. So something I'm looking at and want to improve on going forward. forward. And then I'm, what's worked well for me is doing fewer trades and trying to pick up more premium. When I first started doing selling options, I would do one trade and I was happy if I made $100 on that trade. Now I'm trying to get about 300 per trade. It My average is pretty close to 300. Last week it was 300. This week it's probably closer to 280. But I prefer to do fewer trades um, and bring in more income per trade. Now, I also will do duplicate trades. Like instead of doing six contracts for, you know, an option that may be expiring next month, I may do one for next month and then one for the month after. Like I have, um, I have a vertical put credit spread that's expiring in May for Apple and then one in June for Apple. And you'll find I do that quite a bit. And sometimes I'll roll them. So I'll roll one roll one each month and maybe establish a new one each month. So looking at those kinds of things, and it to me, I do this very passively. I'm still working. So if I can, you know, make what I need to make and set make my goals, and I can do it in fewer trades and spend less time, it really is a big benefit for me. That way I can still do my consulting. I can work with my clients. I can take additional coaching calls for my different memberships. So it's been kind of key for me from the very beginning. I'm not a full-time trader. I probably spend more time trading primarily to share the trades with my membership. I like to provide a lot of information when I when I do share it. So usually it's a pretty lengthy post that can be anywhere from 200 to 300, maybe sometimes four or 500 words about why I might, why I made that trade, what, you know, Delta I use, what I like about the company, what I, you know, what are my concerns and kind of dig a little bit deeper and provide a little bit more to my membership. And I also talk about, well, why they might not want to do the same trade. They might want to take less risk, more risk, go with a shorter, you know, a, a thinner spread or a wider spread. Because I also encourage a lot of my membership, don't just do my trade, but see if you can make it better. Maybe you see something I'm not. And if you do find something or a way to make it better, just share it with the rest of the membership. So just wanted to, to share that. Um, one thing I am doing currently is what I'm calling safe put strategies. And instead of selling cash secured put, puts at this time, especially with the market kind of going through a correction and, and going down, almost, it seems like almost every day. I'm also buying that put for protection. So I'm typically doing vertical put credit spreads. I consider them cash secured puts, but I am buying a put. In the past, I would only buy it if it was really inexpensive. Now, I'm typically buying them I'm buying the put in almost every instance. I actually, I'm not sure I've done a cash secured put in probably a week or two. Um, you know, so that's one thing I am looking at. And then once the market kind of gets in, you know, hits a bottom and starts bouncing back up, then I'll probably will go back to doing just purely cash secured puts. Now I don't do naked puts or calls. Everything I have, I have plenty of cash to cover, you know, the ownership of the shares. And that's one thing I encourage. I do do have a lot of members who mention naked puts and naked calls. And I, I don't do it like that. I prefer to always have plenty of cash to cover any, especially the purchase of any shares. So selling puts, if they get a sign away from you, then you have to be able to afford those shares. Um, and depending on what you're trading in, it can be quite expensive. Um, and then finally, I encourage everyone while you're going through this time period, this correction, to be patient. You know, remember why you originally made the trade. If you like that company, you like its current price, and you feel like, you know, the put that you sold on it, that strike is a good strike to own that stock. Just remember that because a lot of times people get, including myself, get into this mentality of roll, 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 
and you can miss some great opportunities. You could literally roll yourself out of the opportunity to own a great company or ETF at a great price. Now, I've done that in the past. I did that with Apple. I did that with Tesla last year. Um, and I've done it with others. So going forward, like um, I currently have probably a half a dozen positions that are in the money. I'm being very patient. If they get assigned to me, that's fine. Because I do believe we're going to have a bounce. You know, once this correction is done, we're going to have a bounce. And a lot of those same names are going to be worth a lot more. Um, and then a lot of times you might find that, you know, it may be deep in the money now, but it can come out pretty quickly. Um, you know, so being patient, not getting fearful and and rolling too quickly or closing the, the trade too quickly at a big loss. Um, again, I can't stress that more, you know, enough. Be patient. Take your time. Try not to panic. Um, if you bought the stocks, it would be a similar situation. It, you know, if you're just a pure investor and you don't work with options, the same situation, you know, you might have bought some of these stocks a month ago and now they're a lot lower, you know, so this is in a way no different. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate that because again, I have a lot of members inclu and including myself at times, I want to just roll, roll, roll and I have to kind of pull back from that mentality. So, and then, you know, I do think we are going to get a, a bounce at some point. So, I'm thinking it's probably going to be in May, but it could could be a little bit later. It could be in June or July. So being patient can have a big impact um, on your portfolio. So with that being said, um, let's jump right into my trades from last week. I had a really good average. I think I averaged over 340 on, on the trades. And we'll go into each trade in detail since I'm only going to be talking about, I believe it's only five trades. So let's jump into the next part of the video. Okay, I've opened up my planning worksheet. This is the one I released to my community or my membership a week ago, Sunday, April 7th. And that's typically when I do that. And what I do with this planning worksheet is I put any positions that will be expiring over the, the next couple of weeks. At that time, I only had two. The very first two, I had XLU. I had more at one point, but I had closed them, rolled them you know, this is what was left. Um, and I had two that were going to be expiring. I had XLU, which is probably going to just literally expire worthless. Um, it's currently, I believe, 2 or $3. I think it's 64 So most likely that one will be will expire out of the money. Now, if it gets assigned to me, that's perfectly fine. I wouldn't mind owning XLU, which is the utility ETF. Um, I wouldn't mind owning it at that price. Now, SDY, it's been in the money a long time. I've been rolling it. It's a covered call, and it will be assigned to me or away from me, or called away from me uh, this Friday or tomorrow. And that cash, I'm going to put into a different ETF. I'm going to look at buying either SCHD or DVY um, or maybe you know one of the other ETFs dividend ETFs that I like better. I, I don't like S, SDY as much as some of the others. <clears throat> so my plan with that was to to get out of it. I thought it would have been assigned to or away from me or called away from me a lot sooner than now, but it's, it's taking quite a bit of time, which has been surprising. So I'm not going to talk any more about those. So these are all my new trades. So typically what I do is I list each trade as I make it. And if it's an existing one, then I'll show it as a roll, like IJR as a roll. If it's a new one, I just literally list it. And then, you know, each time I have a trade, I it'll be right here. And then I can see how I'm doing for the week. So the first one I did was Apple. This was on April 8th. It's a vertical uh, spread, credit spread, that is, with strikes of 160 and 150, expiring on 621 at the time it was 168 so um and i brought in 375.28 i believe it was pretty close to a 25 delta or something along those lines and the required capital was 1624 and then the, the yearly return so this is adjust for the adjusted for the yearly return is 114%. Now that's just taking the 375.28 divided by the 1624 times 365 divided by the number of days DTEs. 
So that was my first trade. One hundred fourteen percent was really good. My next one, which was on April 9th, was Pure Storage. This is a company I've been keeping an eye on. I, I've picked probably four or five companies that are been on my watch list for a long time, but they've only recently started making money. So I'm, I'm hoping one of these turn into, you know, a fast growing, you know, in a way picking up Apple back like 20 years ago, finding a company that has substantial growth and can do really well. Um, I'm hoping out of the five or six that one of them will will do that. Um, I've also got uh, Square, and we'll talk about you know Shopify and who else. I've oh Palantir, um, you know Path. Some of those are some of the same kind of companies. So this was a I think this was thirty seven. I you can see every time I turn the video off, I hit a Z. So. It's a thinner spread. Um, what I did, and this happens probably 20, 30% of the time. I originally looked at the 35 for purchasing the put, and then I went in a bit, and I found the 37 was actually cheaper than the 37. I mean, the 37 was cheaper than the 35, so I chose it. This one also expires on 621 at the time. It was 5208. It had a delta of 20, 2113. Now, I'm not really good. A lot of times you should mark these as negative because the delta is negative for for puts. A lot of times I just put in, you know, the value. So just think of it as negative. So it's like a 21 delta. I brought in 237.30. So this was probably the least amount of premium that I brought in. The required capital was less because I only needed 1600 minus the 237.30. And it was an 87% return, so it did did quite well. Next is Shopify. This is a company I've been keeping my eye on for a long time. I do want to own them. I uh, might end up using them. Um, but I did this on April 10th. Again, Fidelity IRA, vertical put credit spread, 65.55. At the time, Shopify was at 72.61. So this was also like a 23 delta, just above a 20 delta. This expiration is a lot closer to May 17th. I found Shopify really has good premium and lots of expirations. So the fact that it the expiration was sooner, but I actually brought in quite a quite a bit of premium, $345.30 in premium. And so my required capital was. 2,000 minus the 34th, 345.30, which is like a 200% return. It was probably one of my highest returns that I've had. Um, and again, I I really like Shopify. I would love owning them. Next is IGJR. This is another ETF that I like. It's It was a roll. It's a covered call um, at 105, expiring 517. It was 106.12 at the time, and I rolled it out to 8.16. So I went out a couple months and increased the strike price to 107, which got it out of, I believe it since then has dropped. I believe it's like 104, maybe 103 now. Um, but I brought in quite a bit of premium. So even though the returns are a lot less for covered calls, and again, it's primarily because the required capital is so much, I typically use my cost basis for the required capital. So 424.92 is what I brought in. The required capital, which is my cost basis, is 10,763. And that's like an 11% return. So I believe that particular ETF, I think it pays around 2.5%. So it more than doubled the dividend. That one thing I really like to do is to double the dividend with running covered calls. So you'll notice that in a lot of my different videos. And if you're a member, you'll notice that in a lot of my posts. So last but not least is AMD. I've traded in AMD before. It was a lot cheaper, but now it's gotten a little bit pricier, but it does have great premium and I took a little bit less risk with it. So I did this last Friday, Fidelity IRA, vertical put credit spread um, with strikes of 145, 135. So I, I, again, a $10 spread. This was just shy of a 19 Delta expiring on May 17th. So again, um, expiring sooner, 
you know, the DTE is much less or days till expiration is, is much less. And at the time it was $164. I do believe it might have gone below $169 uh, or $159. I think it's like $158 right now. So it has come down more. So the return on it is probably my best return I've had. If I don't know if it's the best of all time, but it's right up there. It's probably top three. So I brought $333.28 and required capital was $16.66 and 72 cents. And it was a 209% return. So again, one of my best um, returns I think I've ever had. So, and this is one of those trades I was talking about earlier. You know, maybe I should rank this higher and maybe I should take a little bit more risk, but Seems like the chip makers are being hammered right now, so I, I don't know that I would, I would do that. Or I guess if they get to a slightly lower price, I believe this one forty five is about in the middle of its fifty two week range. So I believe it's high end of the range, maybe like one ninety, and the low end maybe around one fifteen or one twenty. I, I I don't know for sure. But that, that's what I'm believing. I'd have to look at it again. So for my weekly total, I did 17.1608, which is a bit higher than my weekly goal, which is 1640 or 1600 on a weekly basis. Monthly, I'm trying to earn 6400 and you'll see that at the top of the spreadsheet. Um, so I did a little bit better, and I believe the previous week I also did better. And then for the five trades, the average trade was 343.22. Again, trying to, to do more per trade and do fewer trades and probably trying to do better trades too. Ones that have higher return on investment and definitively companies I want to own. So, and then on at the end of that week, I had earned 36.34. Um, with my monthly goal of 6400 So this week, I think I'm also in tune to do pretty close to 1700 again. So I should be able to fairly easily beat my monthly goal. So, and then if you're new to my spreadsheets, if you're a member, I also will provide favorites. These are some of the companies that I like the best at this time. And I might already invest in them, but I like to share with my membership you know, the green are ones I think that are really still good values. And then the ones in yellow are a little bit pricey. So, and then I typically share that and change this each week. Then I have a checklist of things I use to determine, you know, why I pick a company, what makes them stand out and, and why I like them potentially compared to other companies. And then guidelines, these are my trading guidelines. These I've been in improving and trying to add more to them. Um, and then my goals, I, I actually keep my goals all in the same spreadsheet. So just wanted to mention that, um, especially if you're a new member and you, you weren't aware that was there. So this is what last week looked like. Um, again, it was a fairly good week, even though the market was down most of the week. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear what you guys think, you know, what kind of guidelines, what kind of things are you using to be able to deal with this? downward market, you know, this correction that we're going through, what kind of things are you doing to help help yourself with the, with trading it during this tough time? You know, so please leave a comment. I try to answer most of the comments, usually within 48 hours. And as always, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time.